Hello class. In this short video, we will discuss about one of the applications of an operational amplifier as a comparators. The name itself specifying that the comparators are going to be used in order to compare the two input voltages. We are already aware of that operational amplifier has a two input terminals. One is inverting and another one is a non-inverting terminal and, and one output is going to be available. So if you apply two voltage levels, one is one voltage is at the inverting terminal, another voltage at the non-inverting terminal, then the output voltage will be depending upon whether the voltage at the inverting terminal is greater than the non-inverting terminal or whether the voltage at the inverting terminal is less than the non-inverting terminal. So when you are using an operational amplifier as a comparator, there are only two output voltage levels are possible. Because of the very high open loop gain of a comparator, it is very easy to determine is there any difference between the two input voltages. Even though very tiny input differences can be used using an operational amplifier as a comparator. And this is one of the application as an open loop system. So, so far in the last class we talked about inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier and buffer. All three circuits are a negative feedback and it's a closed loop system because the output is feeded back. When you're using an operational amplifier as a comparator, we are not going to use that negative feedback and highly operational amplifier is an open loop system. A comparator can compare the two input voltages and able to produce an output voltage which is going to be a positive VCC or negative VCC and we are aware of that the output voltage of an operational amplifier will not exceed the maximum power supply. So the output voltage of a comparator is ideally speaking it could be at positive VCC or at the negative VCC or whatever the maximum voltage the op amp can give. If you are using a 5 volts of power supply, 5 volts and negative 5 volts then the output voltage could be 4.5 volts or negative 4.5 volts. So op amp without any feedback can be used as a comparator. So especially open loop operational amplifier can be used as a comparator. Because of the gain is very high, we talk about the open loop gain of an amplifier is an ideally speaking it's an infinite but practically it's a very very huge then this can be used to detect very tiny changes at the input side. So it is possible that to detect very very small difference if the two input signals can have using this comparator. So just remember this one if the input voltage so as we are aware of there are two terminals for the op amp if the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at the inverting terminal then the output voltage is always positive VCC. If the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is less than the voltage at the inverting terminal, the output is a negative VCC. So no matter what, what type of open loop circuit that we are going to talk about, just keep in mind that V positive is greater than V negative, then the output is positive VCC or if V positive is less than the V negative then the output is negative VCC. So as I'm implying the VCC and negative VCC I'm assuming that the operational amplifier is ideal in nature because no op amp or no electric circuit is going to be ideal in nature the output voltage is close to the VCC whether it is going to be positive VCC or whether it is going to be a negative VCC. So let's look at the very first application of a comparator as a zero level detector. So a zero level detector is used to identify whether a signal crosses the zero level. We will see why this type of circuit referring as a zero level detector. And it can be used in order to produce a square wave from a sine wave. That's one of the application of a comparator as a zero level detector. So if you have a sine wave and if you are willing to produce it to a square wave, then you can use a comparator as a zero level detector. So this is the circuit that we are going to use and you can look 
there is an input voltage Vn is applied to a non-inverting terminal and then inverting terminal is grounded so ground means that's going to be a zero volts and assuming that the VCC and negative VCC are sufficient this particular configuration is in the open loop system because there is no feedback at all so let's look at how the output signal and input signal characteristics are going to be look like so the input signal is a sine wave so you can see here the input signal is going to be a sine wave so let's look at let's take an example of okay let's say input voltage is 3 volts peak so that means the positive peak of the sinusoidal signal is at 3 volts and the negative peak is also at negative 3 volts Because in the previous slide we talked about the output voltage is going to be plus VCC or minus VCC depending upon whichever is the input is greater. So let's recap that one. If V positive is greater than V negative, then the output is going to be that implies then the output of the op amp is going to be positive VCC. So let's look at the input signal. So this part of the signal is greater than zero. And of course, the signal is applied to an inverting, sorry, non inverting terminal. Then definitely in this portion of the signal, V positive is greater than V negative. Because V positive is greater than zero and V negative is zero because V negative is grounded. So V negative is always going to be zero. But the V positive is going to be changing because it's a sine wave. So during this case, when the V positive is greater than V negative, then the output is going to be positive VCC. And when you, when you can observe, the signal rises towards the V out maximum. So V out maximum is one of the parameters used to identify or to explain what's the maximum output voltage. So as we are aware of, ideally speaking, it is going to be VCC, but practically it is little less than VCC. So the output voltage is a pass to VCC. So let's look at when the signal is at zero, when the input signal is greater than zero, then the output rises to pass to VCC. If the signal is at the zero, then this output is going to be getting close to zero and right after that now this whole cycle of an input signal is a negative value so in this particular cycle V positive which is a negative value is less than the V negative because negative value is less than zero so keep in mind that the V negative is at zero volts so that's why if the v positive is less than the v negative the output is going to be a negative vcc so the signal will jump right into a negative vcc and it is going to be continued so these are the two things you need to remember is if the input voltage is greater than zero and again, the input is applied to a V positive or at the non-inverting terminal. If the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at the inverting terminal, then the output voltage is positive VCC. Otherwise, it is going to be negative VCC. So what happens if we reverse the input? So previously, we connected the input signal to a positive terminal we connect the input signal to a positive terminal and the negative terminal is grounded what happens if we reverse those so what happens if the input signal is connected to the negative terminal on the V positive is grounded so V positive is 0 volts and the V negative that's where you apply to an input signal 
so let's take an let's take the same input signal okay the input signal is a sinusoidal signal so let me consider a one single full cycle of a sine wave so that is going to be v input which is applied to a inverting terminal let's draw the output waveform so just keep in mind that if the v positive is greater than v negative then the output will be positive vcc if the v positive is less than the v negative then the output will be negative vcc so let's look at at the very first time the input is zero so and keep in mind that this input is applied at v negative so v negative is zero v positive is already zero because it is grounded so v positive is always going to be zero whereas a v negative is a changing sinusoidal signal so initially the output is going to be zero assuming that both op amp is an ideal both are at zero as the input signal increasing so you can look as the input signal is increasing meaning that that's a positive voltage applied to a inverting terminal so in this case v negative is greater but the v positive is at zero volts so during the first cycle so in this particular cycle v negative is greater than v positive keep in mind that v positive is always zero because it is grounded so if the v negative is greater than v positive then we will get a negative vcc so meaning that the signal will rise to a negative vcc value and up to here so if i consider point a point b and point c from point a to point b the signal so the signal will be negative and at zero then it is always going to be zero assuming the op amp is going to be ideal but in the negative half cycle negative half cycle means it's a neg pool of negative voltages negative value is always less than zero so v negative is less than v positive in other words v positive is greater than v negative so the signal is going to be rise to to VCC so when you compare these two circuit this one and the circuit we're looking before the output signal is exactly 180 degrees out of phase but both circuits are comparing with zero because one of the terminal is grounded and both circuits are in the open loop configuration and only the input signal is changed from non-inverting terminal to an inverting terminal.